Well, today I'm uh, working on the boost tube on Stinky P. Uh, you know, every time I fix one thing, the next weakest point comes out. So the first weak, paint, uh, weak point, which I fixed, was it kept popping apart here. It's not about the boost pressure that's making this fail all the time. It's mainly the heat. Because when it gets up to 60 pounds of boost, the bypass will open, you know, which this easily builds up 60 pounds of boost, you know. So besides that, but it's getting hot enough to basically melt these rubber boots. So when they get hot enough, they get soft and want to pop, like expand and pop apart. So that's why I did this uh, exhaust clamp thing to hold that together. And it kept blowing out this rubber uh, 90 boost tube. So I welded in a metal. I know my welds are not pretty. So what? Sue me. You know, so uh, I put in, uh, like, that rubber boot was the last one that came off. It came off the intercooler. Yes, there's a lip and everything like that, but it came apart. So I got to make a bracket that goes basically from this exhaust here to here and bolt it on to hold it in so it doesn't pop apart. And then uh, once that's fixed, most likely it'll probably start blowing out that elbow, you know. So I might have to put a metal 90 on there. If I do that, then I got to like move the battery and stuff to make room. But either way, let's just take it one step at a time, you know. So my, my uh, most recent boost failure is that one right there. So let's uh, see what I can figure out. So I came down to my dad's shop because uh, my MIG welder is down here course my brother hasn't touched his truck in like eight years and my dad uh pretty much got his jeep almost all back together he's just working on the painting the hood uh like uh what painting the grill the brush guard and a few things and uh it's pretty much almost done man it's like what over 15 years working on this jeep for him <laughs> i think 18 years or 20 something like that in case you're wondering, it's a CJ8 Scrambler. So basically, it's like a CJ5, but with a longer back end, like a pickup truck, like the new Wranglers, like the four-door or two-door Wranglers. Basically, they're copied off of this uh, Scrambler. So the only thing really different on these Jeeps is, uh, one is the roll bar has a longer uh, piece that goes backwards. So this roll bar is special for the Scrambler. You can always extend the the bed on a regular CJ5. And the other uh, rare thing is the divider there. And yeah, my dad is the original owner of this Jeep. You know, he bought it brand new from the dealership and he got, he ordered it with the straight six uh, in it. As soon as he got it, he put the V8 in it. So that saved him a lot of money wise. So VIN number, it was originally a six cylinder. And also he had a winch on the front of this also. Uh, which he has somewhere here. Uh, it's a Warren winch, you know, so uh, he has all that stuff to still go through and mount on and got to restore him. I already got my MIG welder, so uh, see if I can find a piece of scrap metal and make a bracket out of. Yeah, I think I found something that worked out good. And of course, I got my uh, $30 MIG welder I got from the junkyard. Someone just threw it in the pile. So, <laughs> uh, my, guy, uh, my friend that owns a junkyard, I just uh, told him, hey, I'll give you 30 bucks because that's how much it's worth in copper with uh, the piece inside. And I bought it, had wire and everything in it. I plugged it in and it worked perfectly. I, I can't believe people throw stuff away like that. So basically what I'm doing with this bracket is something like this, you know, nothing hard at all. Just basically weld it on and bolt it in. And there you have it, simple. So yeah, I know it's not perfect, but see, I might have to make a new uh, boost uh, boost tube and stuff because I'm going to a bigger turbo. So I might have to go up to a four inch exhaust and a bigger intercooler and stuff. So that's why I'm not going above and beyond to make it look all nice and neat, things like that, you know. But yeah, this definitely gets hot. Like even right here at the intercooler, my plastic grill was melting, contacting that right there. So. Uh, that's like around 600 degrees or something like that. So let's, uh, when I get the bigger turbo, I'll see if this intercooler can handle it. If not, then I got to redesign the whole thing and put a much bigger intercooler in. But one of the improvements I plan on doing on this intercooler is hooking up like a windshield washer bottle to uh, like flip on a switch to spray nice cold water on that. It will uh, help cool down the air going through it. 
So let's just say it's going in at like 800 degrees. It's coming out like 400 or something like that. If I spray this with water with like windshield washer sprayers, you know, uh, it should be going in like, let's just say 800. It should be coming out at like 150, 200 or something like that. So it's going to make a huge improvement. Also, that water will go through there on the radiator also to help cool it down. And of course, I'm still planning on doing water meth injection, which will help keep, uh, cool, uh, cool it down and bigger turbo and yeah a lot of uh plans later on but i gotta do what i can on a budget you know i'm already tapped out on uh stinky pete right now i don't have uh uh three grand to get a bigger turbo and a bigger intake man uh, exhaust manifold and i don't have uh the thousand dollars for the uh water meth injection and i also want to do like a redneck nitrous system which again that's all out of my budget See, I maxed out all my credit cards on um, the engine rebuild, uh, what, two years ago now? And this uh, build, you know, over the winter a year ago. So, like, I don't have any more money to put in Stinky Pete. That's why everything is done on a budget now. But I don't have any sponsorships or anything like that yet. I thought about maybe redoing merch and stuff to see maybe if I sell enough merch, maybe it will cover the cost of everything. Yes, I know I got a haircut, you know, but... Uh, you know, it's just all future plans. Like I, I want to get uh, try to reapply for monetization on YouTube, but I need uh, another, uh, three thousand watts hours for me to try to reapply for that. It just, uh, you know, just doing what I can with what I got. You know. Well, there we go. Uh, simple little uh, fix or patch job. We'll see how that holds up. Probably the next thing to blow will be that uh, uh, boost tube ninety I got. That will probably be the next thing to fail now. Well, that's it. Uh, we'll see how it holds up to this Saturday at Diesels of New York season closer. You know, there'll probably be about 30,000 people there this Saturday. Um, I can't do the stuff I normally do. I don't have the money for colored smoke tires or fireworks or anything like that. So uh, not this year. You know, like I thought like see sponsorships, unless I start winning competitions, then I could do more like sponsorships it would be kind of cool like i would be the only guy trying to compete in like high horsepower truck pulls burnout competitions not running on diesel fuel you know that's what would be very interesting that would kind of put my uh, name out there in the, the racing circuit if i can pull huge amounts of horsepower and stuff like that on free fuel you know that would be awesome the other idea I had later on is doing um, like a whole video series like uh, on today's episode, will it run, you know, and having a little uh, five gallon bucket hooked up to the fast fuel pump and just uh, trying different things to see if it will run, you know, like uh, one episode would be uh, like, will it run on just straight brake fluid, you know, will it run on straight hydraulic oil and this and that and uh, you know, also get time, if I had the money and time, to put on a dyno and uh, uh, run it on diesel fuel to get it controlled, like horsepower and torque, and then uh, switch it over to waste uh, motor oil and see what it pulls so I can prove for a fact, scientific fact, that I am getting roughly 25% uh, more horsepower, torque, and better fuel mileage, so... But, like, again, like, everything right now is on a tight budget. Um, like, I, I'm i just pretty much going paycheck to paycheck at the moment. Now, I'm not complaining. It's just that's what it ended up being. Like, I used to work for the oil industry. I don't do that job anymore. So, I'm not making, like, a six-figure income anymore. My income pretty much got cut in half. Go back um, back to driving dump truck. And nobody wants to hire me to do heavy hauling anymore or, or, or pay me what I used to make. So... Uh, otherwise I got like I got some hazmat jobs I can look into in the spring and some other stuff but either way I'm fine like I know if I can get monetized on YouTube I should be making enough money to uh, do more things on my channels so we'll, we'll see how things go so like basically if I had the money there's tons I would like to do to this and still keep it under the factory body you know how much horsepower can I put through this thing you know so like here's some screenshots. I found a frame uh, like a company makes that would be kind of cool to get that frame and uh, get like a 
a nice like 1500 horsepower drivetrain and put in it and then put uh my body like sneaky pete's body down onto that frame and drivetrain and everything and through the factory rims and tires and all that you could never tell that any of that stuff was changed you know like a four link suspension with airbags front airbags things like that you know a lot of things i could do with this truck and still hide it make it an actual sleeper also looking at getting like a uh, like a Suzuki or a Zuzu box truck or something like that. So uh, what I could do is tow Stinky Pete to uh, burnout competitions or other events because that's the only thing that uh, what bothers me if I go out to Texas to like burnout wars or any of their competitions. If something breaks, I gotta still drive Stinky Pete back home, you know. Uh, also, when I put a tote of uh, oil in the back of this truck, I don't really have a forklift to unload it down there or anything like that. Unless I, even if I put on a trailer, there's other things like that I could do and unhitch the trailer. But the problem is, if something breaks, uh, I got I, I can't just. Sometimes you can't just fix it there and still drive it home. So I looked into a box truck. Do the front half of the box like a camper sleeper thing, so I could sleep in the truck. Just like I did over the road driving tractor trailer. It's a sleeper cab like thing. And then the back half will have the totes, uh, extra parts and tools. And I just tow Sinky Pete on a little flatbed trailer that I have. You know, that that's the idea. But like you're still looking at like to buy the box truck. You know, you're still looking around $5,000 to buy a basically a box truck. Plus whatever work it might need. Might need tires and brakes, uh, service done on it. Then I got to get an aftermarket fuel pump and stuff, get it set up so it can run on uh, waste motor oil and all that. Um, so there's still like tons of money to be putting out for these kind of things. You know, like I also talked about before, if I made enough money off social media and stuff, I wanted to ship Sticky Pete over to the UK and do uh, truck shows and burnouts over there in the UK, over in Australia and like Africa and like France and like there's lots of other things places I can go with the truck but you know it's just it's tough because you know I only get like what sixty thousand dollars a year at my job and you know uh, I'm already like 50 grand in debt of personal loans and credit cards and everything like that so it's like yeah I just don't have the funding you know but I'm just explaining a lot of this just for people that want to know or understand what's going on why I don't do things uh, why am I being cheap on other things? Uh, because I get that a lot on my channels, you know, like, oh, you're not, you're sp saving all this money in fuel. Like, why, uh, why don't you have money for this or that? Like, well, because I spent all this money in like these aftermarket parts, like literally my old 12 valve, I put like over eight grand into that engine and it's sitting on the stand right now with melted pistons. I try to sell the whole engine for like $3,000. Someone else can rebuild it and get it back uh, running again. Uh, but nobody wants it. You know, I was going to put that money into Stinky Pete, but it's just, people just don't have the money to spend. And also that OH Chevy still hasn't sold yet and some other stuff did not sell. So it's like, yeah, it just, things are just at a standstill until I either get a pet, better paying job or I start getting monetized. So I'll just end the video with a nice view again. I just wanted to get this quick. The sun is going down. So it was kind of cool, like orange and red. So like you can, see out there quite a long ways you know <laughs> I'm thinking later on of maybe taking uh, a row of trees out so I can uh, like just a few right here so like down there how I took those trees out and you get more of the view think about doing more of that way also but uh, yeah my favorite time is like uh, during the winter when we get like fresh snowfall or ice and the Sun is coming up it looks like everything is glitter you know, white glitter, like a postcard-like thing, you know?